I am Dr. Raj Pine. I am one of the interventional radiologists here at Rochester General Hospital. We are a group of five fellowship trained interventional radiologists. We are minimally invasive treatment specialists. Uh, we are trained in radiology, but we use imaging to do procedures which are minimally invasive. One of the specialties that we do is interventional oncology, which means uh, minimally invasive cancer treatments. We do the full breadth of all the cancer treatments from providing biopsies for patients to get the diagnosis, all the way to uh, large treatments such as chemoembolization to a new treatment called Y90 radioembolization. To sort of explain this better, I'm going to use a little analogy here. This is what termite damage looks like. So anytime you have a problem, uh, as you would at home, you have to start thinking what your treatment options are. So what would be your treatment options if you thought you had termites in your house? Obviously there's an analogy here and I think it's very similar to things like liver treatment. You know, you have things like chemotherapy and all it is is it's a toxic drug and it generally hinders cell growth. But with the radiation, you could radiate the entire part of the tumor and they've gotten very good at that and just direct it towards the tumor. Surgical resection is what we call the gold standard. If you are able to get the tumor out, if it's limited, you want to take the entire tumor out because it's 100% cure. Then you have the other options of more what we do in interventional radiology, which is these liver-directed therapies or what's called local regional therapies. The good thing about the liver is that the liver is supplied by two forms of blood vessels. One is called the portal vein, this big blue vein called the portal vein. The second is these little liver arteries called the hepatic arteries. The good news is that tumors almost all feed off these hepatic arteries. So we can take that little blood supply that goes to the, to the tumor, kill it, and still have all this portal vein supplying normal blood. That's what we use to do these procedures. As a surgical oncologist, my role is to help care for patients with a variety of cancers, including abdominal and pelvic cancers, liver, pancreas. My treatments include not only the surgery, but also the preoperative evaluation and postoperative care of patients. Cancer today is treated really with a multidisciplinary group of not just physicians, but also non-physician providers. And I think we all work together. We discuss patients and their problems in multidisciplinary conferences, as well as other less formal discussions, so as to try to provide the best care for people. For many patients, there's a role for multiple types of treatment to be delivered by different types of physicians. And so we coordinate as a team amongst the doctors here at Rochester General Hospital that take care of cancer patients in a couple of ways. We have a number of multidisciplinary conferences and we will discuss particular cases so that we can bring the expertise of all of those different disciplines and a deep knowledge of all of the treatment options together to offer the patient the option that is the best fit for their personal situation. We often will give stereotactic radiation to patients who have just a limited number of liver tumors. There are some patients who have too many tumors for us to treat with stereotactic radiation and for those patients we will sometimes recommend radioembolization. The role of radioembolization is primarily that it allows us to treat numerous tumors. Thirteen years ago I was diagnosed with um, islet cell carcinoma which is neuroendocrine uh, cancer of the pancreas and I had the tail of my pancreas removed surgically and I was told I was surgically cured. What they didn't realize at the time was that those nasty little tiny cells had already metastasized to my liver. 2009, I'm close to five years out, one treatment with the sear spheres. The only symptoms I had were I was tired, I slept. So I went in, I had the one lobe treated, went back and had the second lobe treated and those cancer cells are still decreasing in number and size. I'm vigilant about my cancer, but I don't let it own me. I treat it, I recognize it, I respect it, but I have a place for it. I'm a physical therapist, and I used to say to my patients, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. I ate every single one of those words. I was at a crossroads in my life, and I decided I can, I can go down that path and wallow in self-pity, and the world will soon distance themselves from me or I can go down the path and find a way to make this positive. When they told me that I had pancreatic cancer, I, I had my youngest child was seven, and I was thinking at the time, you know, the terminal kind, the exocrine kind, I thought, he's never gonna remember me. And this past weekend, he graduated from um, Navy boot camp. He's 20 years old, <laughs> so I yeah. I was actually diagnosed with colon cancer in May of 2013 at the age of 38. 
rather young to have colon cancer, so that was a bit of a shock. But not only do I have colon cancer, I have stage four colon cancer. My colon grew the cancer and it spread to my lymph nodes and my liver. So since my diagnosis, I've had a series of chemotherapy treatments. I've had surgery on my colon and surgery on my liver. And I'm doing really well, I think, because I've discovered a great way of handling it. Early on in my diagnosis, I decided that I'm gonna start dancing when I'm feeling pretty down. And I basically told my husband, look, if I'm starting to get a little morose, if I'm starting to get bummed out, I need you to make me dance and I need you to videotape me doing it because that will put me right in the moment and you know, let me get as silly as possible. And sure enough, I started doing this and it started taking me from completely sad and down and out to cracking myself up and just happy again. So they put a little video of it together and, and uh, it's on YouTube. Exaltation, the sweet disintegration A few discolorations, then it comes along Abuse what he chooses, the kisses and the bruises There ain't nothing he refuses, then it comes along It comes along, and I am with I appreciate people more, I appreciate life more It's not the end of the world to be diagnosed with cancer There's a whole lot of life to be lived. I can't get down, get my feet back on the ground. When I'm up, I can't get so when we work as a team together to uh, try to offer all the options to our patients, ultimately our goal is for our patients to be able to say yes to hope. Say yes to hope. Say yes to hope. Say yes to hope because there is hope out there. No matter what your diagnosis, no matter what's going on, there is hope. Just beginning and then it comes on strong, it comes on strong.